Today I'm going to teach you a little bit about polar graphing and tracing a polar graph on Desmos. So when we're graphing polar equations on Desmos, we'll start by changing our grid to a polar one. To do that, we go to our settings, which is this wrench in the upper right corner, and we're going to click on the circular grid option here. We can also, when we're in this menu, change between radian mode and degree mode, and note that when I change to degree mode, the labels on our um, angle lines change from radians to degrees, and we'll stay in degree modes for this demonstration. Some polar graphs are quite simple, like r equals 3. That just graphs a circle of radius 3 that centers at the origin. But we can also make our polar graphs based off an angle. So for example, we could draw r equals theta divided by 100, which created a spiral for us that started at the origin and worked its way out. Now, I'm on a computer, so in order to get the theta symbol, I simply typed out theta, T-H-E-T-A, and got theta. But were I working on another device, I would use the keyboard. So if I bring up my keypad and go to ABC, theta is right here over the delete key. And there's also an R here, which you could use if you were working on another device as well. Now let's make things a little bit more complicated. First, let's delete our previous graphs. And let's graph the equation r equals 2 plus, whoop, I'm going to do parentheses, 5 theta. Uh, again, to get cosine, I just typed it out, but it's also available under functions and then trig, and there's cosine right there. So this is a really interesting graph, right? This is a version of a polar rose. Um, you can make many variations of it by changing around those numbers in the equation up here. But what you or your students might be wondering is, how is that graph actually made? How is it traced as we go through the different angles from 0 to 360? Are we starting here and going through all the small petals first and then going out to the large ones? Are we starting at a large petal and tracing both the inner and outer petal here before we move on to the next petal? Are we crisscrossing across the whole figure? Desmos can help us answer this question. In order to do that, first we're going to duplicate our graph. So to duplicate our graph, we go to this little gear button, Edit List, and we hit the Duplicate button. So we have a second version of our equation. And we're going to change our first equation so it's a dotted line. So I click on the purple circle and change the style to dotted. And then I want to change my second equation to a different color. So I click and hold, and I'm going to change the color to orange so it really stands out. Now we're going to add restrictions to our second equation. We use curly brackets, which again you can find in that ABC menu. And let's type 0, less than, theta, less than 30. So this has made our curve much smaller. It's just showing us now the portion that gets graphed from 0 degrees to 30 degrees. So we have an idea of how our curve starts getting traced. We're going from the large pedal to an opposite inner pedal. And we could do this a little bit more by going out to 60, so we see another part of our path getting traced. But we really want to see the whole path of the polar curve, and we'd like to see it all quickly. So in order to do that, we're going to add a slider. So we replace 60 with the letter A, and up pops this little add slider, and we're going to click on the A. And this is going to allow us to sweep through multiple A values very quickly. But we want to change the range of A values to be 0 to 360 to match our degree mode. So I clicked on that negative 10, and I put in 0, less than or equal to A, less than or equal to 360. And now if I pull my slider along, I can see that every time we go from little pedal to an opposite big pedal to a little pedal and all around. But let's say I want to automate this procedure. I don't want to have to keep clicking and dragging it. If I hit the play button, it automatically traces for me, though it's going quite fast. So if I hit these left pointing arrows over here, we can slow down the process a lot. You may have also noticed that it was untracing once it reached 360, but if we want it to just start the tracing process over again, we can instead hit this double arrow right here. So this way, when it gets all the way down to 360, it just starts over again. 
This is a really great tool for students when they're first learning about polar graphing. If you show this to them um, with a simple graph at first, like a cardioid, it can help them learn how they would make the graph themselves on paper, talking about going through 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, graphing different points and learning how to connect them. And it also gives them an idea of how to work with more complicated equations like this one. So as a challenge to you and your students, try and recreate this with graphs of your own. Um, use it as a tool to also graph uh, polar graphs with pen and paper. And feel free to comment below if you have any questions. And thanks for watching.